<laughs> no, these were just things that were like commentaries and editorials on. This is my gift to you. <laughs> it's not mine, but I'll use it. <laughs> Any. Um, <laughs> there, there were people that would write commentary on different pieces and there would be a discussion back and forth. <laughs> Some of these I brought up on this first one. I have no idea what the commentary was about, but this is called I Want Love. I'm playing here in bed, and I'm looking over him. He's sound asleep, perfectly happy. You know, I can't remember the last time he's held He has no idea what I'm thinking. He's perfectly content this way. I decided to spend the rest of my life with him. He's my best friend, but I don't know if he loves me yet. There are two micro proses next, and this first one is called Dandelions for a Passing Stranger. <laughs> oh, there weren't some flowers in this part of the world at this time for this three year old in their yard. <laughs> Allow me to read. I, <laughs> I loved my silly red tricycle, the type that every suburban three year old probably had. I would play on my driveway, riding past the evergreens, past the white mailbox, but I'd usually turn around before I rode past the gravel and onto the neighbor's driveway and ride back to the security of my own garage. I would sometimes play with the neighbor's drive in the neighbor's driveway since it was on a hill. I would ride at the top of their by their maroon colored garage, navigate my trusted bicycle around uh, in, by the rusty handle, hang on to the, hop onto the seat and then just zoom downhill. But those times were only when I thought no one was at home at their house, and for when I was feeling particularly adventurous. Once, I was riding up and down my own driveway, and I saw another little girl walking on the neighbor's yard. I watched her approach my driveway, walk on the edge of my lawn. I was fascinated by this girl. She was new. She was, had a new face to look at. She was a girl with long blonde hair, so different from my own. She came from the lawn behind my house and was walking along the side of my driveway, away from my home. I just watched her walk. When she passed me, I looked over at the neighbor's yard. Our lawn was full, full of green grass. Theirs was full of dandelions. I reached over to the side of my driveway, got off my tricycle, hopped over the ledge, and ran to the neighbor's yard. I picked a dandelion. I quickly ran back to my tricycle. I patiently waited there just where I, it patiently left, waited there just where I left it. I pedaled fiercely on it to the end of my driveway and caught up with the little girl. Still sitting on my tricycle, I looked up at her when she stopped walking right in front of me. I held up the dandelion. I, <laughs> I got the one little first one. I quickly ran back to my tricycle. Oh, it, oh no, no, that was the end. Sorry about that. There was another interview. Um, it, it was a three year old. Yeah, Charles, right? How old was I? Oh, it was you. Oh. Yeah. That was Sherry. She's my oldest friend. She's two years old. And she was the matron of honor at my wedding. Yeah. And we've gone, you know, we've gone our separate ways. We're entirely different people. Her husband was the guitarist for my first band, Mount Stewart, which was cool. And, uh, and one year after I'd moved to Texas, I'm walking in costume and Halloween on Bourbon Street. And Sherry runs out to me. I'm like, what? Hi. She was there for somebody else's bachelorette party and we stumbled into her store. <laughs> so Ryan, so yeah, amazing. Yeah. I'm like, we've never been here before ever. Yeah. Anyway, um, on to other things. This is the other piece of prose. This is community poetry, which happens on the first Wednesday of every month from 1 till 3 in the afternoon. And anybody is welcome to come up and share poetry or listen because we love it. If you listen and read, then 
Grossman's German Shepherd bit the inside of my leg. I was babysitting two little girls and a dog named Roscoe. I remember being pushed to the floor by the dog. I was on my back kicking at the dog. It was gnawing on my leg. And I remember thinking, I can't believe a dog named Roscoe has been attacking me. And I was thinking that I had to be strong for these two little girls who were watching it all. I couldn't cry. Or when I stepped off Scott's motorcycle at 2 a.m. and it burned the calf on it burned my calf in the exhaust pipe. I was drunk and he was driving and I was careless when I swung my leg over the back. It didn't even hurt when I did it, but the next day it blistered and peeled. It looked inhuman. I had to bandage it for weeks. It hurt like you wouldn't believe. Or when I was little roller skating in my driveway and I fell. My parents yelled at me, did you crack the sidewalk? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the point. That's what you say to make somebody not cry. Did you crack the sidewalk? Yeah. Yeah. Or when I was kicking someone and scraped my left knee against the wall. Or maybe it was the carpet. When somebody asked me where that scar came from, I tell them I fell. Mm. Or when I was riding my bicycle and I fell and my front yeah. wheel skidded on the gravel. I had to walk home. Blood was dripping down my elbow to my wrist. I remember thinking that the blood looked thick, but that nothing hurt. Hmm. I sat on a toilet seat cover while my sister cleaned me up. It was a small bathroom. I felt like the walls could have fallen in on me at any time. <laughs> Years later, I can still see the dirt under my skin on my elbows. Or when I was five years old, my dad yelled at me for making a mess in the living room when I had... Or like when I scratched my chin, when I had the chicken pucks. The point is that scars can be physical, emotional, childhood whatever is scars. This one, I had letters in response to a poem including the state of the nation, which is so perfect for our reading from Dr. July, I guess. My phone rang earlier today and I picked it up and I said, hello. And the man at the other end said, Hi, is this Janet? And I said, yes it is. May I ask who's calling? And he said, yeah, hi, this is George Washington. I'm sitting here with Jefferson, and we just wanted to tell you a few things. And I said, uh, uh, why me? And he said, excuse me, I believe I said I was the one that wanted to do the talking. God, that is the problem with Americans nowadays. They're so damn rude. And I said, you know, you really didn't have to use language like that. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. It's just that I've been dead for so long. I lose all control of my manners. Well, anyway, we just wanted to tell you some stuff. Now, you know that we really didn't have much of an idea of what we were doing when we were starting this country here. And we didn't have much experience in creating bodies of power. So I can understand how our Constitution could be misconstrued. Yep. There's probably more. And then he put in a dramatic pause. <laughs> And he said, well, we said that people had a right to bear arms. We meant to protect yourself from a government gone wrong, and that's so they can kill an innocent person for $20 cash. And when we said freedom of religion, we included the separation of church and state because freedom of religion could also mean freedom from, from religion. Yep. And when we said freedom of speech, uh, we had no idea you'd be burning a flag or <laughs> painting pictures of Christ dosed in urine or, or, or photographing people with whips up their respective anatomies. But, well, 
I guess we've got to grin and bear it. Because if we ban that, the next thing they'll ban is books, and we can't have that. And I said, but there are schools that have books banned, George. And he said, oh. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of, Ben Franklin just walked up. Oh, yeah. Hello. This one, this is one of two more from the beginning of this book for people who have just shown up. Um, older issues of CCD were saddle stitched, and it says online if you want to have something done as a book, let us know. And somebody just asked to have. Volume well, 79, May 1996, CCND redone as a book, and it, it was just released today. It's going to be posted up on Facebook this afternoon, but it's actually online. You can get it anytime. And these are from the letters to the editor section. One of two remaining poems. This one, the first one's called People's Rights Misunderstood. I had a dream the other night. I was walking down the street in the city, and a man came up to me, a skinny man. He, he lost his hair. And he walked up right up to me, and he told me no one cares anymore. And he took my hand, and he asked me to care about him. Uh, I'm not supposed to be like this, he said. I I'm not homeless, you know. I, I have AIDS. And I wanted to tell him that someone did care, that he didn't have to die alone. But you know how sometimes you, can do you can't do things in your dream no matter how hard you try? Well, my mouth was open. It was wide open, but no words were coming out. You know, I'm afraid to go to sleep tonight. I'm afraid a pregnant woman is going to come up to me in a dream and ask me for a hanger. <laughs> and I'll tell her there has to be a better way. And she'll say, this is the way she chooses. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid a woman will come to me and tell me she doesn't want to live because she's just been raped. And her world doesn't make sense anymore. And I'll tell her that she can make it, that one in three women are raped in their lifetimes and they all make it. And besides, the world doesn't make sense to anyone. And she'll say that doesn't make her feel any better. That's true. And I'm afraid that I won't be able to go down that street in that city again without it looking like a Quentin Tarantino movie, where everyone's pointing guns at each other. Yes, Mr. NRA, you are so right. I feel so much safer in knowing everyone has a gun, and that there are more gun shops than gas stations, and that everyone is so willing to do the killing. And I hate to say this after I read this, I love Quentin Tarantino movies. You do? Oh, we do! It's so bad. I know. But I like them. But that's just me. Because we all <laughs> like to appreciate violence. I don't. Well, you're the weirdo. Yeah. No. <laughs> you and your sister. <laughs> you're the weirdo. You have another it's, It looks like a, I think the battery. I think the thing in the battery was broken. Um, or on the car. Yeah, I've seen it. And this is the last one. And it's a very political statement -y piece. And it's called The Carpet Factory, The Shoes. Okay. I heard a story today about a little boy, one of many who was enslaved by his country in slavery. <laughs> one of many who was enslaved in this country by child labor. <laughs> cruelty. That's what it is, it's cruelty. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. Okay. It was the beginning, so I'm just going to start this one for the beginning. I heard a story today about a little boy, one of many who was enslaved by his country in child labor. In this case, he was working at a carpet factory. He managed to escape. He told a story to the world. He was a hero at 10. But the people from the factory held a grudge. And today I heard that the little boy was shot and killed on the street. He was 12. And he complains to me when I buy shoes that are made in China. And now I have to think, did somebody have to die for these? Will somebody have to die for these? They've got a weekend. <laughs> okay, good. Ray, Ray. Or, yes. Oh, we'd then like to read. Yeah, yeah. sure, we would. Okay.